Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. If you're looking for an easier way to do motion graphics, well, Film Impact is a game changer. Last week, I did a complete tutorial on film impact transitions, and I wanted to save a, a whole different tutorial just for the motion stuff because it deserved its own tutorial because there's so much of it. Motion graphics are the thing that all of us are trying to do. We're, tr we're trying to add some uh, interest to graphics and things and videos and flipping stuff around but not have to go and use After Effects and render it out or fight with Dynamic Link. Instead, these are drag and drop effects. Let me show you a little thing I put together and then we'll break it apart. All right, so the very first thing you see is something that looks like the right on effect from After Effects. It's called Shape Flow, and it's in the video transitions. Believe it or not, Shape Flow, you just drag and drop it onto the text, and it does that. And you've got a whole bunch of control on how that works. For instance, if I wanted this longer, I just drag it out and it's longer, drag it over to the left and it's shorter. You can change the edge delay, lumen delay, object delay. Right now it's set on 40 and I can change that. There's a feather that's on here that's very light and the feather center, where that feather is going to be. Um, and what are the start points? So you can set where it starts. And again, I just use this as a default, just drop this on. I also have a text animator here. Look at this. That is drag and drop. These are not separate characters. This is the magic in Film Impact. This is just the regular essential graphics type tool. Drag that uh, text animator on it and it animates. And then I've got the shape flow happening underneath. So if we go to the text animator transition, you can see we can edit the graph, ease in, ease out, fade this in and out. And the, you can have this as to overshoot or a bezier, and it doesn't really make sense to, to do to overshoot. Um, and these were all the defaults that I just dragged on here, but you can set push position, horizontal spacing, vertical spacing, horizontal zoom, vertical zoom, um, angles, degrees. You've got so much control. What are the backside controls? Color, colorize. And you can always just surprise me. So if I click on the surprise me, it's going to do something completely different and fly down there like that. Surprise me. And, and now you can see that these are kind of like the, the text animation effects that you have to go all the way to After Effects to do it. But you know the problems with going to After Effects. First of all, it's not in the edit. I have no way to time this here. I've got to guess what the timing is here, change that, come back here, dynamic link doesn't work, it breaks, render, all. instead, drag and drop. Okay, then I've got pop motion in here. And notice how the title pops in very smoothly. And this is using an overshoot, and you can see the curve, and I can again change that to a bounce instead. So it bounces. And if we go back to the overshoot, I can change things like the amplitude and you'll see the curve changing beautifully. You want it slower, drag it out. You want it faster, shorten that transition. No keyframes, love it. And save this as a, 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 a preset. So just right click 
on the effect, save it as a preset, save the duration, anchor it to the beginning and name it whatever you want. And then you can drag and drop it. And then the last one here, I just used three titles and just staggered them. Again, this is what you would do in After Effects. And these are real 3D effects. This is not that fake spin, the basic 3D uh, that comes in Premiere Pro that's very old and very awful. Film Impact has a built-in uh, real 3D engine and built-in motion blur as part of it, and it's GPU accelerated. So you don't have something that just looks awful. You've got beautiful, soft blur, motion blur on in that. And then I just had them all flip together on the other end. So let's have a look at, at this example. This is a simple example of pop in. Pop in, and then I've got a motion tween, boop, down here. So let me break this down. I'll get rid of all of this, and I'll show you how I made it. So this is just a graphic. It's just sitting there. Okay, so here's pop motion impact. So drag that on and it just pops up beautifully. Look at that, that nice little ease in there. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's what you know when you've hired a good motion graphics animator in After Effects, when you have that. And of course, we could select that and change this from an overshoot to a bounce if we want. And now it's gonna bounce with beautiful motion blur on that bounce. Look at that, beautiful motion blur. And we could set the uh, elasticity of that and now it's going to bounce, woo, woo, woo. I also want to add an, an, another motion tween over here. And instead of adding a keyframe, I'm just going to cut this because I want the second part of this to be animated different. So I'll grab my razor tool and um, animate that and grab motion tween and put that between the two. So now it's going to blend between this position and that position. Right now the position is exactly the same so you don't see anything that's different. I'll select the second one, go to my regular motion settings here and just change this motion and drag it up to the upper left. Now I have motion tween with no keyframes. And if I wanted this to do something different, instead we'll do an overshoot and we'll change the amplitude so that it bounces quite a bit. Boom, there we go. Boom. So here's our animation. Pops in and then jumps over to there. But then, you know you get that email or a call, oh, we don't want it to go to the top left, we want it to go to the bottom right. And after you finish yelling at the, uh, the uh, email, you delete your keyframes and work again. Or, no keyframes, watch this. We'll select the second one. Remember, it's independent. So if I move this down over to here and then go back to the beginning, guess what? It now goes over there. Oh, and I don't like that effect. Well, I'm gonna say surprise me and we'll see what it does. Whoa, no keyframes. You can make these changes instantly and they look beautiful. Okay, I wanna show you another one. This is, I've got an animation here and just something to keep in mind, whenever you see this happening, where you see multiple versions of this, change this from repeat to transparent. This is the edge behavior. And here's another motion graphic. This is a, a motion camera setting where the text comes flying in. Again, this is a, something you would do in After Effects. And it's just a regular live uh, motion graphics, live text right here. No keyframes and it edits perfectly. It, you're going to spend a ton of time having fun here. The way I like to think of all film, film impact effects and transitions is two ways to use them, drag and drop, or drag and drop and customize. 
Next up, I wanna show you something that really dr drives me nuts with the basic 3D. If you've ever tried to use the basic 3D to do spinning text, you know that it's not real 3D. Film Impact has a real 3D engine. And here's the problem when it's not real 3D. So this is using the regular basic 3D effect to rotate this around. And you might think, well, what's wrong with that? Well, what's wrong with that is if we turn show our guides, let me drag a guide in. on the baseline. So if I rotate this on the baseline, you see that it doesn't rotate on the baseline. It rotates wherever it wants. The basic 3D effect is old, like 30 years old, and it was only ever meant to, to, to uh, animate on the center of whatever the frame was. It was never meant for any accurate uh, kind of animation. So watch this. This is using Film Impact. Here I'm animating exactly right on that baseline. And you'll notice that I have a cut. So on the left-hand side, I've got the 3D rotate effects. And then I've got no effect on the second one. Because for this one, I've got it set for a destination. So by default, it's continuous, so it will keep animating that around, but I want a start and an end. And you get to set that um, start and end by here. Here's my target uh, initial rotation and target. And there is the anchor point. So I get to set where the anchor point is and where it animates from, so I can set that directly on my guide. That's something the basic 3D is missing. There is no such thing as a rotation and an anchor point because Adobe would have had to have built a 3D engine to do that and they wouldn't have done that 30 years ago. Let's keep going. Here's another example. Let me just hide my guides here. Here's an example that you might want to do, a nice little spin in the bottom corner. Well, that only works when the anchor point is down here. You want to see what, what this looks like if you use the uh, basic 3D? It does that. It spins based on the center of the frame. No, I just want to spin that bottom one. Same thing here. I want to spin that out from the side. I want to spin it around. Well, let's look at the basic 3D and see what it does. <laughs> That's not good. I don't want it to obscure part of the frame. It's supposed to be a, a little thing down here that's animating. Okay, now let's just show you how we can drop, drag this in for a title animation like this. I've got a, a, just an essential graphics title that's sitting right there. And I've got the stroke effect on here, by the way. So the stroke effect is going to uh, go all the way around that whole graphic, which is nice. And this is just all live text and live shapes uh, from the essential graphics. So if I want to just do a pop in, I can drag that on the front. A little pop in. Boop. Boop. No keyframes. Or if I wanted to spin that in, I could have done that. So it spins in. Spring in. with nice motion blur on there. Travel motion. So now it travels, and if we click on, here we can set the angle. So where is that coming in from? And the nice motion blur on that too, boom. And the bounce or the overshoot, same kind of thing, no keyframes. And then watch this, I'm gonna drag it on the end of this and it's smart enough to know it's going out. So you don't have to tell it one is in and one is out, here's a keyframe, here's a keyframe. No, drag and drop and it just works. It's simply beautiful. And if you look here at Film Impact, you'll see 
tons of tutorials, tons of examples, and you can get to tutorials directly right inside the application and see how all of this works. It's just beautiful. Film Impact is used by professionals around the world for years now. And this level of detail and, and professionalism is just amazing. Um, it's changing what I do because I don't have to go to After Effects anymore and I don't have to fight with, with linear keyframes and all the animation stuff just for stuff to come flying in when I want it in. No, boom, 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 drag and drop, save presets, reuse it, motion blur, 3D engine, uh, uh, GPU accelerated. It's a game changer for the way that we're working. Hey, if you're new to Video Reveal and you found this informative, take a moment and, and uh, subscribe. We really do appreciate it. If you do that, you want to support us more, you can do that on videoreveal.com slash shop. Donate once or monthly, any amount. We do appreciate uh, anything you do. There's a bunch of free stuff to download. Links in the description for Film Impact for you to try it out for yourself. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my jo job to look at different ways for us to make all of our videos look very interesting and cool and uh, make it so that we don't have to go and learn After Effects.